It's a remarkable room, sir. I've never seen anything like it. All this memorabilia, all these wonderful things. It's easy to see, sir, that you're a fanatic film buff. Oh, we all need our dream worlds, Lieutenant. Even psychologists. Are you a collector? Oh, no, sir. I wouldn't know where to begin. W.C. Fields. Now, sir, there was a genius. This was his pool cue. Look at that. And this is his pool table. No. Oh, yes, Lieutenant. May I, sir? W.C. Field. See if we can hit this in the corner pocket. What I wanted to ask you, sir, when you knew that you were going to be late for your tennis game, did you happen to call Dr. Hunter to tell him you were going to be late? No. We both knew I might be held up. Not as late as it turned out. Not as late, no. Do you enjoy games, Lieutenant? I've never had time for them, sir. But I'm sure you're very good at games. Having your own tennis court and all. Oh, this looks very old, sir. Oh, that. It's an old movie light I picked up last week. It's called a baby spot. I'll work on it and clean it up, like those. Would you have been expecting a phone call? This sled, sir. What would this be for? It's priceless. From the movie Citizen Kane. With Orson Welles? Oh, that was a terrific movie, sir. Mrs. Colombo, she claims that's a masterpiece. I'll tell Mr. Wells that you approved. Could we get on, Lieutenant? I was going to ask you, sir, if you would have been expecting a phone call around 3 o'clock. I mean, if you had been home. Would you be expecting someone to call? Nobody specific? I'd like you to be sure about that, sir. Lord knows after what happened here, you'd be entitled to be confused about something like a telephone call. I appreciate the dispensation, Lieutenant but I'm still capable of recalling whether or not I was expecting a call. I was not expecting a call. I wouldn't, sir, not if you're headed for the kitchen. To tell you the truth, sir, it's pretty awful in there. I wouldn't go in there until they cleaned it up. Was there a particular point you wanted to make about Charlie? Or the dogs? Oh, right, sir. I almost forgot. Is that a real phone? Of course. It's unplugged, sir. There, by the baseboard. What I wanted to show you, sir, the kitchen phone is a wall telephone, just like this one. The way we found it, the receiver was hanging like this. It's still hanging in there, sir. The kitchen phone. That's the way it's hanging now, and that's the way it was hanging when I first found it. You understand? Yes, I understand. You make it very clear, Lieutenant. Well, that's the point, sir. You said that just prior to the attack, what Charlie must have been doing was provoking the dogs. I say what he must have been doing was standing there, talking on the telephone. Well, that seems a reasonable assumption. But when the dogs went wild, couldn't the phone have been knocked off the hook? Not if you listen to the phone, sir. What you're hearing, sir, is the sound coming from the kitchen phone. 
And that's the same sound that I heard when I first arrived. And I put the kitchen receiver to my ear. And what does that tell you, Lieutenant? It's a fast, busy signal, sir. If the phone had been knocked off the hook, what we would be hearing is a steady tone. No, sir. Your kitchen phone rang. And your friend answered it. You can count on that, sir. Well, since we seem to be playing some kind of a mind game, couldn't Charlie have been calling out on the kitchen phone? No, sir. In that case, we would be hearing a steady tone. With a fast, busy signal, we know the call came in. That's a fact, sir. I checked with the telephone district. Oh, well, you seem to have won the game, Lieutenant. I accept your fact. That still leaves the question of why the dogs attacked. You see what I mean, sir? It certainly has been a tragic year for you, hasn't it, sir? I mean, with your wife's death just... Uh, Six months ago, and now this? Well, you know, we all have to deal with our emotions. And my first instinct is always to turn to a friend. And the first friend I think of is Charlie. And then Laurel and Hardy. Laurel and Hardy, sir? My dogs. I should have known. You certainly have a beautiful home here, sir. It's like something out of a movie itself. It belonged to Peter Barra. You see, when I leave the Institute, Lieutenant, even I live in a dream world. Oh, there's nothing dreamy about you, sir. Not the way those thousands of people depend upon you for peace of mind. Well, we'll be seeing more of each other, sir, until the investigation is settled. Lieutenant. It's not that I haven't been impressed by your company, but what is there to settle? Well, it's that telephone again, sir. You see, whoever called Dr. Hunter must have heard those awful sounds in the kitchen, sir. Must have heard the dogs and a man dying. Dying and screaming, sir. And nobody called the police. We never got a report, sir. Not a single one except for the young girl down here in the guest house. So you can see, we would like to know who made that telephone call, sir. You understand, sir. Good day, sir. Mm -hmm.